7 of the Iowa Code, and my judgment relative to sentence is based on um, the 25 factors I'm required to consider for you um, under the uh, Iowa Code for sentencing juveniles uh, to first degree murder. Um, primarily, I'm looking at um, rehabilitation and protection from the community. Um, from further offenses like this by you and others. And in selecting a sentence for you, um, I've considered um, your age, and I'll go in depth with that, the contents and the pre-sentence investigation, the pre plea agreement reached by the parties, and uh, in sentencing you, um, since you were a juvenile when you committed this crime, the sentencing requires me to um, conduct a more thorough uh, finding out of sentencing pursuant to Iowa Code 902.122. And I've considered all those circumstances um, and decided that um, first you're going to have to be uh, required to submit to a DNA sample. That's required for all felony convictions. Um, I've considered your, um, the, the brutal nature of this offense, um, but also in line with the minutes of testimony of the case, along with the entire court file. And uh, I also find that the restitution amount, I'll give the county attorney 30 days to file pecuniary damage statements for all the restitution. That's not the $150,000 restitution that is required in this case. And I will order that you shall pay to the heirs of Noheim McGregor $150,000. That will be um, to the estate of Noheim McGregor or to her heir heirs jointly and severally liable with Jeremy Good Goodale. and that you have the opportunity to request a determination on that at a later time. Uh, Mr. Miller, this is a lengthy record that I'm going to make, but uh, I'm just going to go down the list here and tell you what I have to consider, uh, not just from this case law, State v. Roby has been talked about, State v. Lyle, um, I think State of Majors was the recent one that was discussed by your attorneys. Uh, the legislature codified uh, these factors under 902122. Uh, the first factor that I've considered is the impact of the offense on each victim. And uh, the victim impact statements, um, including the victim impact statement may include comment on the sentence for the, of the defendant, and we have just heard that. Uh, but this factor I find to be an aggravating factor in determining your sentence. Um, your horrific actions led to the death of Nahima Graver, and her family will never be able All right, we are approaching the top of the hour. Thank you so much to Matt Mangino for joining us this hour. And coming up next, we are going to continue to bring this coverage. Matt, always great to be on with Pleasure you. Pleasure to be with you. I'll be with you tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to your next show. Sounds great. This is Court TV Live, your front row seat to justice. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Judge Ashley Wilcott. Michael Ayala is off today. So happy to be with you. We want to get you back to a sentencing hearing. Why? Because the judge is issuing the sentence. This is in the case of Iowa versus Willard Miller. This is one of two teens who pled guilty 
to killing his teacher, his Spanish teacher, over a bad grade with a baseball bat. First degree murder. After the plea, sentencing comes. He was a juvenile at the time. What is this judge going to order? We're taking you right back in where we left off. And the judge is discussing the mitigating and aggravating factors he has to find before he can issue his sentence. Statements remind us all of the pain the family and friends of Naima Graber will carry with them forever. The second uh, thing I consider is the impact of the offense on the community. I also find this to be an aggravating factor. The entire Fairfield community has been shaken uh, by the senseless premeditated murder of one of one of its beloved uh, teachers. I think that came through pretty strongly with uh, Chief Kinsella's uh, 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 her testimony, and that you, along with Mr. Goodale, are accountable for that detrimental impact on the community. The threat uh, to the safety of public and any individuals posed by you, the defendant, I find this also to be an aggravating factor to the extent that any individual who would plan and participate in a murder based on an unsatisfactory grade is an individual that will require immense re rehabilitation. Um, and there was some discussion about a mandatory minimum. Uh, I am going to issue a mandatory minimum on this case. Uh, if I gave the Board of Parole the option to release you without a mandatory minimum, it would be contrary to the public safety of the community you would reside in and to the residents of the community you reside in. There was some uh, discussion about there being an expert to impose a uh, mandatory minimum that most uh, normally would be a matter for expert testimony. This is far from a normal case. Um, and to the extent the mandatory minimum is an issue, I think the facts and circumstances of this case demand it, and I would not be doing my job if I didn't impose some sort of mandatory minimum. The degree of participation in the murder by you is another factor I've considered. It's an aggravating factor. Uh, the reason that Nahama Graber was murdered was because you were unhappy with your grade. But for your thoughts, planning, and acts, Nahama Graber would still be alive. Uh, Mr. Miller, you and Mr. Goodell committed premeditated murder of your teacher. And it was carried out in one of the most horrific fashions one could imagine, which goes to the nature of the offense, which is an aggravating factor. Planning the murder by stalking Miss Graber, her walking route, bringing supplies such as a wheelbarrow and a baseball bat, then beating the victim lifeless is a horrific act. It calls for swift justice, deterrence, and accountability. With regard to your remorse, you waited to today to show some sort of remorse uh, that, uh, for the act you and Mr. Goodell committed. I find that you downplayed your role in this homicide based on your admissions and the minutes of testimony and the evidence presented in the sentencing hearing. It's an aggravating factor. Uh, state's witness, Talon Sissom Fane, a fellow classmate of yours, uh, who you told that you caught a body with a baseball bat. While the defendant is remorseful for his current situation, there has been little remorse shown by Mr. Miller for Naima Graver, her family. I think State's Exhibit 131 shows the extent of the premeditation to finalize the win or secure a victory when describing the murder of the defendant that you and the murder that you and the defendant, uh, Jeremy Goodell, committed. Acceptance of responsibility, I actually find to be a mitigating factor. Uh, Mr. Miller, I find by you pleading guilty, you spared the victim's family and witnesses in the Fairfield community a protracted trial where the details of this brutal act will be recounted. With regard to the severity of the offense, including the following, 
uh, the commission of the murder while participating in a felony, the number of victims, the heinous, brutal, cruel uh, manner of the murder, including whether the murder was the result of torture. Uh, to the extent the court is to consider there only being one murder victim as opposed to several, I, I consider that a microscopic mitigating factor. The overall heinous, cruel, and painful murder is an enormous aggravating factor. Next factor the court has considered and is placing on the record is the capacity of the defendant to appreciate the criminality of his conduct. And I do find this to be a mixed factor. Um, case law requires me to account for your immature brain uh, while committing this crime. Uh, most of the science I'm familiar with states that a human being's brain isn't fully developed until they're 25. Certainly based on your immaturity, you did not likely think too deeply about what happens to individuals who plan and execute a murder. Uh, you knew what you were doing, whether you appreciate appreciated how wrong it was raises an urgent rehabilitation flag for me. Deterrence and rehabilitation require the court to sentence you to a lengthy prison sentence. The next factor I've considered is whether the ability to conform with the defendant's conduct with the requirements of the law was substantially impaired. And again, to the extent that being a 16-year-old high school student impairs your ability to comply with the law, I find this to be an aggravating factor. Um, there's no indication you had any issues prior to November 2021 complying with the law or societal norms. The next factor I consider is the maturity uh, of the youth, the defendant, Mr. Miller. It's a mixed bag because it is a mitigating factor that you were 16 when you committed this crime. However, uh, you're also an intelligent young man. Both the Iowa State Supreme Court and the Iowa, uh, both the United States Supreme Court and the Iowa Supreme Court have held that juveniles are constitutionally different than adults for the purposes of sentencing. That's Miller versus Alabama, State versus Sweet. In the State versus Sweet case, the 4 3 Iowa Supreme Court case that held that juvenile murderers cannot be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. The United States Supreme Court held in the Miller case, uh, barred life in prison and without the possibility of parole for all but the rarest of juvenile offenders, those whose crimes reflect permanent incorrigibility. I also cite Montgomery versus Louisiana. I think you're very fortunate, Mr. Miller, that the state of Iowa does not allow the option of life without the possibility of parole, because that would have been a serious consideration for me if I had that option. Next factor I consider is the intellectual and mental capacity of the defendant. And again, it's aggravating. Mr. You're an aggravating factor. You're a very bright and intelligent man. You committed the evil crime. The nature and extent of the prior juvenile delinquency or criminal history of the defendant is the next factor the court considers including the success or failure of previous attempts at rehabilitation. So again, this is a mitigating factor to the extent that you did not have a previous criminal record and you are a good candidate for rehabilitation. However, um, some of the things reported to by the South Iowa Area Detention Service Agency regarding some warnings and consequences for various infractions of inappropriate comments or unnecessary horseplay or verbally assaulting another juvenile with the threat of violence, these things, um, arguing with staff, you know, that sort of misbehavior. Certainly some of it can be attributed to your age, uh, but I think it just shows that you're just starting your journey towards rehabilitation. The following factor I've considered as well is mental health history of the defendant, Mr. Miller. By all accounts, I don't see if there's any mental health issues for you uh, in your record. The next factor the court considers and makes record of the level of compulsion, duress, or influence exerted upon the defendant, but not to such an extent as to constitute a defense. Uh, this is an aggravating factor uh, because it was your plan to tell Nohema Graver 
and he recruited Jeremy Goodell based on uh, the evidence and the minutes of testimony. Next factor that the court considers is the likelihood of the commission of further offenses by you, Mr. Miller. In determining what tends to impose this factor is difficult to weigh. Um, but with the amount of time that you'll be incarcerated, it is my hope that you will not only have time to reflect on your actions, but to also grow as a person. You're naturally doing it um, physically right now, but I'm talking about mental maturity. I believe that uh, you're currently a threat to the community based on this planning and executing of the murder with Jeremy Goodell. But with the programming and maturing in the Iowa prison system, beginning with the youth parole and offender uh, program that was discussed earlier, I believe that you have the ability to avoid committing further offenses because uh, mandatory prison sentences are great deterrents for human beings. The next factor I've considered is the chronological age of the defendant the features of youth, including immaturity, impetuacy, impetuosity, and a failure to appreciate risks and consequences. And this is generally a mitigating factor for you, Mr. Miller. You were a minor when you committed this crime. The law treats you as an adult for the purposes of prosecution. But at sentencing, the law required me to consider your immaturity. The your impetuousness, failure to appreciate risks and consequences in determining the appropriate sentence. Um, you thought, I believe, as all criminals do, but you certainly naively that you could avoid legal consequences by being coy or pointing fingers at others. Certainly, uh, your failure to appreciate the consequences played a role in your teacher's death. While this particular case also shows that planning that went into the murder, uh, it does also show your impulsivity um, to, to reduce a small portion of the mandatory minimum time that I'm going to oppose uh, or would otherwise impose on a first degree murder case. At some point, um, some of your traits will be difficult to alter, but um, it is not impossible through rehabilitation. Uh, I was troubled when I read that you reported you believe you have a higher IQ than most of the staff at the South Iowa Detention Service Agency. Uh, this sort of arrogance is sometimes a reflection of youth, other times it's just your personality. And the arrogance is troubling to me, and I, I find um, on the record that that arrogance is um, not primarily due to age, but to an intellectual superiority mindset. The next factor I've considered is family and home environment that surrounds the defendant, which is neither an aggravating nor mitigating factor. All right, we do need to squeeze in a break. So, you know, the court is very um, detailed in going through aggravating and mitigating factors in this case, which he's required to do, especially because this person who's pled guilty was a juvenile at the time he committed the crime in November of 2021. We're going to take our break, but when we come back, we're going to hear what the judge decides as the sentence for this guilty team. Stay tuned. Tonight on Closing Arguments, we are diving back into the Black Swan murder trial. A former ballerina stands accused of murdering her husband. The victim's brother joins us live to discuss his firsthand perspective of the defendant and this case. And on the docket, we look ahead to the OnlyFans murder trial as prosecutors build their case against Courtney Clenny. What strategy might each side be looking at for this case? Closing Arguments with Vinny Politan. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV.
Welcome back. Let's get you back into court in the state of Iowa against Willard Miller. Again, this is his sentencing hearing. He is now 17. He was 15 years old at the time. He murdered with a baseball bat his Spanish teacher, 66 years old at the time, and he pled guilty to that. Let's get you back into court for the judge who is now going to render the sentence. Presumption against minimum terms of incarceration for juvenile offenders, we have expressly held, even commanded, their use if courts concludes that sentence is warranted after consideration of the factors. And those factors are what I just went through, Mr. Miller. And based on recent Iowa precedent, I'm not allowed to consider a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole, which is permissible in most other jurisdictions. Certainly a high school junior who formulates a plan, or high schooler that formulates a plan with his friend and uh, murders a Spanish teacher is a dangerous person to the community. Um, the definition of malice is the intention or the desire to do evil. And evil does not have a birthday. This court cannot overrule precedent. However, I will not gloss over the fact that you and Mr. Goodell cut Mohammed Graber's precious life short. That would not be justice regardless of your age, Mr. Miller. The bedrock of our criminal justice system is deterrence and rehabilitation. And ultimately, while acknowledging your youth and developing brain, I find that your intent and actions were sinister and evil. Those acts resulted in the intentional loss of human life in a brutal fashion. There's no excuse. There is not a systemic societal problem that explains or justifies your actions. The court finds based on the nature and circumstances of this offense, along with the required 25 factors that I get to consider in sensing, a juvenile in the state of Iowa for murder in the first degree, that the defendant, Willard Noble Chaden Miller, should be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 35 years. This sentence is permissible under the Iowa law. A 35-year mandatory minimum is not cruel and unusual punishment for the defendant as it represents the appropriate time of incarceration for the defendant and Mr. Goodell's premeditated murder. It is further ordered that the Iowa Medical and Classification Center in Oakdale, Iowa is designated as a reception center to which the defendant is to be delivered by the sheriff of this county. The defendant is given credit for all time served on this charge, including any juvenile detention center. To the extent uh, that it doesn't apply to the mandatory minimum, I will put in section 90159, Mr. Miller, uh, does allow your term of incarceration to be reduced because of statutory good conduct time, or credits, program credits, and you may be eligible for your parole um, after your mandatory has been served. You will have that opportunity to see the parole board uh, and have good time credit at that time. You have the right to appeal your um, guilty plea, but your attorney must file a written notice of the appeal within 30 days. And we talked about waiving that right um, at the guilty plea sentencing. Um, if you do want to attempt to challenge your guilty plea, there is an application for permission under Iowa Code Section 8.14.29. Um, the appellate court to determine whether the application is granted or denied or preserved for post-conviction relief. Regarding your sentence, if you're only appealing uh, your sentence, your attorneys must file a notice to the Iowa Supreme Court within 30 days. Serve the written notice of the taking of that appeal upon the Jefferson County attorney and file the same with the clerk of court together with evidence of that service upon the county attorney. And you must mail or deliver a copy to the Iowa Attorney General's office. 
the service and the filing of the written notice of appeal and the time and manner just specified as jurisdictional and a failure to comply with such requirements shall be deemed a voluntary waiver of your right to appeal. You may be entitled to court appointed counsel to represent you on your appeal and the preparation of these proceedings at state expense. Judgment accordingly, minimus accordingly, and immediately, no bond on appeal. Counsel, for the record, we need to make a sentencing hearing. On the state. Just uh, one thing, Judge. I know he will go to the youthful offender unit, I believe, in Oakdale. I don't know if your order needs to specify that specifically or not. I just thought of that a minute ago, so just to put that on your radar. But otherwise, nothing else. My understanding is they'll automatically send him there when he gets there. Uh, any further record from the defense? No, Your Honor. Back to the hearing. 